this afternoon. How's everybody feeling? A few people are feeling good. We'll take it. We'll take it. Well, welcome to Real Identity Ministries. If this is your first time in the house, there is freedom here. Amen. However you choose to worship, we encourage you to do so. You are going to see people dance, shout, holler, jump, lay on their face, cry, uh, all to the glory of God. Amen. So you are free in this house to worship him in spirit and in truth in the way that he has created you to worship. Um, we want to make a few announcements before we get started. Number one, Wednesday night, we will be having... The 12 Spiritual Principles. We are doing this interview style, round table style, however you want to call it. Um, it has been very impactful this go around, I believe. Um, just doing it in a different way, getting to hear the different perspectives. That is at 7 p.m. here. Uh, we encourage you, if you're able to come out and be a part of that, listen, it doesn't matter if you don't struggle with addiction, okay? These principles have helped us all walk out of trauma, addiction, bondage, just be beginning to walk in our new man. So I encourage you to come be a part of that and to really work these principles in your life. Um, second announcement, Saturdays at noon on Zoom, we have our Snipers Assembly Intercession. Um, Melvina Jones is our lead intercession. She heads that up. If you are not in the group chat, but you want to be a part of the intercession, reach out to Mel and she'll make sure you get that Zoom link um, before noon on Saturday so that you can be a part. We pray for the house. We pray for our state. We pray for our nation and we pray for the world. We don't just stop at one thing. Um, and it's also a training. Like If you desire to be an intercessor, but you're not really sure how to go about that. It's a training session for you as well. Um, I know Josh went out Friday. Friday. Every first and third Friday, they go. Uh, the evangelism team goes out and they minister to the people. Um, so our last one was this past Friday, and we'll go out whatever the third, 15th, that's the date. And that will be in the state of this time, right? Okay. Okay. So be at Stadium House of Prayer at 6.30. Um, if you have kids, there's child care. They get like a Bible lesson. Um, they do some fun things. So I encourage you to go be a part of that. Again, uh, you may say, I don't know how to evangelize. Well, perfect, because that's what Josh is going to do. He's going to train you to evangelize and to spread the love of Jesus. More than just handing out a pamphlet. More than just holding a sign on the street corner, but really how to be the love of Jesus to those around us. So, so many people haven't even heard the gospel. And so it is vital now more than ever for us to get out to be the body and to spread the gospel, both through word and through action. And that is what Evangelist Josh has been doing with the team, and we so appreciate that. Um, so let's give him a hand. That takes time away from his family, from his fishing, from anything he wants to do. So we appreciate him being willing to do that. Um, and then our, our biggest thing coming up, I don't, I don't want to say our biggest thing. Let's... Okay, we are doing a charity golf. Okay, uh, some of y'all know we have the sober living facility right now. We can house two men at a time. We want to build a 12-man facility. That costs money. So we are hosting the Charity Gala October 7th from 6 to 9 p.m. at the Jefferson Civic Center. We will be in the Jefferson Crawford Room. Please, please, please get your tickets now. We have until September 23rd to get tickets. So time is running out. Okay, so get your tickets, rim.church, if you want to do it that way. If you're uncomfortable with doing it that way and you want to purchase your ticket here, we can do that. Come to us after service, ask us how we do that, and we'll get it taken care of for you. We don't want anyone to miss out just because they don't want to use you know, the internet to put your card in. 
totally get it. We take cash. We like cash. Um, so however you need to do it, we, we can get it done, okay? But we, we have until September 23rd. So if you've been waiting, stop waiting, okay? Um, it's going to be a really great night. We have some amazing auction items. We have some amazing worship that will be... Uh, Brother Marcus will be there on the keys. Uh, we also have Julie Sayer joining us of Julie Sayer Worship. She's done some stuff with casting crowns and things like that. So it's, it's going to be a great night. Um, it's a really cool, right? Oh my gosh. Raffle baskets. My country is coming out today, y'all. Um, and then just some really great food and a good time with the Lord. We did get a prophetic artist. We have been praying about that from the beginning. So praise God. Tammy Garman is going to be there. She will be painting as the, the gala is going on. And then she will present what she was given from the Lord at the end. Um, and we're going to talk to her about seeing if that's something she wants to gift to somebody or if it's something she wants to put up for auction. However she wants to do that, however the Lord leads her. But we're just really excited to have her out with us. Um, and then... What's it called? What's the next slide, babe? The retreat. <laughs> Legacy retreat. I was like, glory retreat. That's not it. Um, the glory. I'm still calling it the glory retreat. The Legacy retreat. <laughs> the Legacy retreat is a family retreat, okay? We want everybody to be there in all walks of life. If you are connected to this ministry, we encourage you to get out there. It's a time that we pour back into you guys. We have a time of fellowship. We have fun. We cut jokes. We watch the game last year together as a family in between, like, you know, sessions or whatever you call them. Um, and the glory was still there. The glory was still there. The dogs won. They went on to win a national championship. You know, we, we I prayed for that at the Legacy Retreat last year. So it says, pray for the desires of your heart. I think that's all of our announcements. That's all of our announcements. You're standing up. Amen. Come on, God is faithful. Come on, He's faithful. We serve a God that'll meet you right where He's at, where you're at, but won't leave you where you're at. Amen. I'm so grateful for everybody to be here. If you didn't come with somebody, I want you to go to somebody right now. Josh is already walking in the spirit. And I want you to say, I'm glad you're here because we really are. We are family here. We are grateful. We are an army that is after the next soul, after the next individual. Um, I, I want you to encourage, encourage some of you. Look, I'm proud of people that will go out and say, come. Be my family. Come be equipped because God is doing something. I believe nothing less than God to move supernaturally today to begin to walk through this place. But not just walk through this place, but walk through our homes and walk through our job sites. Everywhere we go, I believe dimensions of glory is about to show up. And I believe you will testify of the goodness of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. If you're visiting, we want to say we're grateful you're here. And I want to encourage you, don't hold back. Let the Holy Ghost use you. Praise the King of Kings. Lift His name on high. Stomp your feet. Dance, clap, whatever it might be. As long as it's the Jesus of Nazareth, you are free in this house. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Say, Jesus, you're welcome here. Holy Spirit, you are the comforter. Will you comfort what I need comforted? You are the confronter. Will you convict what I need to be convicted in? Come on. You are the leadership of my life. Will you lead me in all ways of righteousness? Come on. You are the Alpha and the Omega. Come on. That means the beginning and the end. Come on. There were some things you walked in here. You needed an expiration day on. It needed an ending day. I believe they some things that just ended. But what I love about God, you don't quit nothing, you begin something new. I believe today is a day of beginning something new. I believe there's breakthrough in the house. I believe as you're here, as you begin to worship the one and only King, God will begin to increase in every aspect of you. It's not your works that happen. It's the faith of what he said, the promise of manifestation that is guaranteed to you. Come on. So in your belly, out of your mouth, 
praise Him? Come on, did you come to praise the King of Kings? Did you come to worship? We're here for one focus. His name is Jesus. Come on, some of y'all going to encounter the nail scar hand today. Some of y'all going to get to feel the facts of the pierced side. Some of y'all are about to take and be activated in your footwork to do the demonstration of what He's called you to do. To cast out demons. To raise the dead. To see people that's broken mended. To see the one that had no hope. That was hopeless coming Your faith pleases the Father. So I was reading it in Isaiah 56 today. I had to work through some things. And uh, Isaiah 56 is Old Testament, but a promise from God is in that. And at the end of Isaiah 56, it talks about the foreigners lay down their lives and follow me. It talks about how we're being grafted in. That's us. We're in, and that was a promise, y'all. Hundreds of years before the Messiah came to make a way. God was telling us then and he's saying it still now that he made a way. And as I was reading this this morning, I kept hearing this song. I've heard it all week in my spirit. Um, it's a super simple song. It's literally one verse. I want you guys to follow with me, okay? It says, The devil can't hurt me or my family. This is an addiction.
you are already free. And just like in the natural, they will serve papers that will evict somebody out of the house. You know what? The papers don't do no good sometimes and they have to send authority. I believe there's some agents in the room of the kingdom of God that will put the name, their children, that will put their grandchildren, that will put their neighbor on that piece of paper and begin to bring the authority of Jesus of Nazareth and say, you free in Jesus' name. Devil, you got to go. That's what your praise is doing this morning or this afternoon. You're beginning to send authority into a place that there was a lacking of. It is in the market. It's destroying yokes. So serve the papers over what is holding your family back or your of who God has called you to.
there's such an adeptness and the richness of his presence. In this moment, I'm reminded of the scripture that says, Ask, and I will receive. I don't know what it may look like internally or around you at home, but if you're not already asking, I want you to begin to ask. I don't know what your neighborhood looks like, but I want you to begin to ask him. I don't know what your job situation looks like, but I want you to begin to ask him. I don't know what your current status looks like, but I want you to ask him. For God is history. For anything asked in his name, shall be answered. Shifted everything. But the Lord says, I'm leading you and directing you in the path in which I've called. 
called you to. He says, many people have looked down on you, but he said, in this day, know that I look down and I see my masterpiece. In the midst of me looking at you, you are the apple of my eye. He says, I hadn't forgot you. He said, I called you by name. I know that I needed you in your mother's womb. I know that you weren't an accident. I know that you wasn't an accident. I know that you were perfectly in a place. I that he's molding you. Yeah, it's been tough. And it's been heavy pressure. But that which was in life just broke. I in the name of Jesus. I that which could be paid is now paid. In the name of Jesus. For I begin to see now the glory of God. That which could be paid for. I don't know what I'm going to start. So what I hear the Lord saying, know that it's paid for. Know that you're mine. Know that I take care of mine. Know that that which I promised you will come into the fullness of. Says the Lord. And this is what I want. I want two of the ladies, the elders of the house, I want, you, I want you to step out. I know you're new here. I want you to step out to the end right there. You ain't got to come to the front. I want two of the ladies of the house. Go ahead, have a girl of glory. I love you. I'm sure we're going to go. Go ahead, Pastor Go ahead, Pastor Angie. Go ahead, Pastor Angie. Ricky Cotaya, I just want you to 
this holy, won't you lay hands on her? Uh, and I truly believe, I can tell you. Ricky Kataya, they fight, just let them continue to me. They shoot you by eye, come on. Ricky Kataya, come here. There's a fresh anointing coming upon you. And there's a dimension of, we just call it brotherly love that you always desired. And God says, I had grafted you into him. But also, he designed people uniquely around you. Uh, I, I just, come on, I, I just pray as, as God is about to hurt. Still no more 
sleep. Religion, you won't steal anything. But we prophesy not just life, but that of abundance. Abundant life. in you 
In other words, there's not, you just don't hear the sound. He says you carry the sound. In the midst of carrying the sound, write the sound, the lyrics, that which he's beginning to give you. I, I don't know if there's a struggle there or not, but I hear the Lord saying that I am going to take and begin to birth some levels of revival. Um, it's like I see your prayer closets. I see you postured in there. I literally see the cloud of heaven in there. And God says, I'm responding on your behalf because you see mountains move for other people. But there's been times in these last three or four seasons, it's like things haven't moved quite like they used to. And it had, it's almost like it's been a, like, I'm stuck. But God says, you ain't stuck. I've been preparing you because I have a major entrustment over your life. For I hear the Lord saying, you will train intercessors and you will train prophetic sound. For I hear the Lord saying, you hear clearly and have heard since you were young. And God says, as you've always seen, you'll always see. For he says, today where the witchcraft come to attack you, and it's like mud on a windshield. At times, like, I can't see good. God says, I come to clean the windshield off. He says, this battle fatigue, but it's leaving now. Because you know how to praise through? You know how to pray through. But the Lord says, today, you're coming up an army of one through for your heart desire. Because you see it. And he says, I'm about to ignite you huh? with a fresh joy of gladness huh? for anointing now is beginning I don't know why I'm seeing this there's a dimensional revival you'll start laughing at Walmart like that and you watch the whole aisle everybody come down they'll be like what's going on you were going to Dollar General and you, the, the people just this shout, you know, they talk about they were just healed, but it's only about to hit everywhere you go. There's about to be a circumstance uh, that changed for a minute. For you have stood and not compromised. Uh, you have stood and you had to have some hard conversations. God said, I told you to speak. Even if you feel like some of them it didn't work out. He said they can't run from the truth. For when you release it, they grab it. They, they have, it's always there. It's a strength that's coming in your back like never before. And he says, know that I've called you for this hour. Know that my generation needs you for this hour. Know those babies need you. You're going to be because there's a dimension of holiness that you carry. That you would even cry out, God, have they lost it? Have, has, has it got so bad? But God says, no, I've got a standard in our earth realm that won't compromise and will stand in the holiness of my purity. The thing is, you don't condemn them. You're just speaking truth to them. So that's going to be a lot of your language in prayer. You're already doing it. But prayer, you'll begin to actually activate people. Bible prayers. Now that I hear him, now I respond to him. And God, you said this, so I gotta say this. In the name of Jesus, I can talk. Don't give up on teaching. I don't know what teaching means. Um, but there's levels of teaching that you're gonna have to continue in. It may not have been the way it used to be, but God says, I didn't take the teaching gift away, it's still in you. You're going to break your control of your mind, do you sit? Your mind did your kataya. Father God, I thank you right now for the awakening of the teacher, for the intercessor as well. And we thank you for activation in her spirit uh, for the generations. Uh, and we thank you, Father God, for a flesh and electricity that begins to travel through her body. Uh, even of miracles in your hand. Uh, I prophesy now. Uh, can I touch your hand? Ricky Kataya, I thank you now for the miracles, uh, the signs and the wonders. So they thought it was just for the apostles, but it was really for those that believe. And he says, you are just crazy enough to believe me. You know what I mean when I say that. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Come on, look at your neighbor. Sound glad you made it here today. Somebody to lay hands on you when you already believe the belief comes alive in you. And it 
have a guest to go. As it says, this sharper than any two edged sword. It'll separate spirit and soul. It'll separate bone and marrow. No, we think it even now for the proper fluid to return. Uh huh. Won't be excess fluid, it'll be proper fluid. The perfection of the stripes of Jesus. Amen. Come on, he's faithful. Come on, he's faithful. Come on, look at your neighbor and say he's faithful. Now look at your other neighbor and say I carry the sound of revival. Now look at him again and say it like you mean it. I carry the sound of revival. See, a revival ain't a series of events. A revival's a lifestyle. You want to see revival, go read Luke, Mark, John. Go over there and begin to read the story of Jesus. Huh? The life of Jesus, he walked in revival. Now do I believe that we have some day after day, but when you meet the person of revival, huh? revival will come contagious. Huh? I don't need a church, I am the church. Huh? I'm not saying that we don't need this place, but I'm saying you're activated everywhere you go on mobility. Because what I love and surely when I walk in the streets and somebody was lacking it and God says, hey Dustin, say this. And you watch something come alive because revival means something that was dead that now come alive. Hey, my message to you. But it is my message. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, I live out of revival. Let's give this team up here a hand for later. Come on, encourage somebody today. Amen. How many can say that the Lord is here? Amen. Amen. He's faithful. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, this kind of glory is available for my household. Because when you can walk in that revelation, everybody walks out. You sending people out of school, you sending people out there. They went to get you some food, but they come back and got a testimony of the goodness of the glory that touched somebody at McDonald's, Applebee's, or over at the homeless. Yeah. Amen. 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 Prophet Marcus, says one thing about it, man of God. These people hungry today. They're hungry. Amen? See, when you can understand the glory or begin to understand, I believe we don't keep understanding that until he comes back in his fullness. Amen? When he comes back in his fullness, I believe we'll fully understand the glory. But from glory to glory, he says, now I've come into a new dimension of who he made me to be, but I couldn't go to there yet because I'd be processed for the last glory. Amen? Because glory to the glory is literally, it's like, it's like, have you ever walked, you, when y'all walked out from outside, it was warmer than it was in here, right? right. Okay, so it was two different, like, uh, dimensions of, of temperature. The glory is the similar thing. When you go from one glory to the next, I promise you this, there will be another dimension of his presence you're entering in. God always spoke to me. He said this. He said, every dimension of glory, if you cry out, be ready for the fire that prepares you for it. Because in, in the, he's an all-consuming fire. If he's an all-consuming fire, that means, and we got the air conditioner on like 70 or 72, so it, it's the Holy Ghost in here. But the cool thing is this. If he is an all-consuming fire and you're made in his image, you was made to carry the fire. So every time you begin to taste for the fire and begin to enter into a new realm of fire, that is actually bringing you into originality in your soul and it's crucifying your flesh. Now it's giving you the ability to operate in this dimension of glory and not just live there. Because if I, I said, it says this, don't just live in the spirit, but walk. So I must be in cadence 
of the Holy Ghost. You can tell you what's the biggest hindrance in the body of Christ of walking in cadence of the Holy Spirit. We look too much in the natural and not in the supernatural. But because when I can see through the eyes of Jesus, I can say, you know what? I don't see you in your current state. I see what God done for you. But as you now are walking with God, I also, because of the relationship, can say, you know what? You hear God, but let me hear, let me tell you what he said. Open rebukes better than hidden love. Right? So this is what it's saying. Correction is not a cuss word. Rebuke is not a cuss word in the church. What it's saying is, it's the fullness of love. Because philos is what the world has, and I can now, that's love in the Greek, right? And now how my emotions change is how I love. But a cope, it has no what? It keeps no record. It has no, it's, it's, it's unchangeable. It's the fullness of love. Have anyone let their kid touch a hot stove? Have anyone let, let me touch a hot stove? It's okay to be honest. It's okay. We, got, we walk this thing out. Amen. This is the key. That's what correction or rebuke does. It says, I want to make sure you don't have to fight a battle you didn't want supposed to fight. I want to make sure that you ain't harmed over here. And with that, it's saying, hey, let me pull you into a place that you ain't always receiving that now you're releasing. And I believe we have a people today that's ready to release. Look at your neighbor and say, get ready for the release. You can stay as long as you want or you be seated. But I believe there's a word that's in my belly that really is prophetically, you know what? They may not watch YouTube. They may not hear me in the natural. But I believe this word is from heaven. And as I release it, not because nothing's special, but authority is real in the spirit realm. When it's released into the earth room, I believe it's going to ignite a remnant. And I believe there will be a testimony that you begin to see of what God is saying. Not Dustin saying, but what God is saying. You're about to see divine exchange, a supernatural uh, uh, overflow of what is needed for the kingdom of God here on earth. Look at you, the neighbor, and say, it takes money. Takes money. Amen? It's like heaven ain't lacking. Amen. So I want to lay us a foundation before this. How many remember last year, and we, we had it up earlier, we was talking about um, the, the, it's virtually the legacy retreat. Um, we, we, we done it last year, the end of November 1st of December. Doing it at the end of December this year, going into the new year. With that, um, it, the Lord spoke to me while I was up on the mountain, and he said this. He said, reservoir, and I got the revelation of it. So I'm going to touch on this, but my word that God spoke to me three weeks ago is the release of the reservoir. So just because you hear don't mean you're walking and understanding. It may only mean you got a revelation. It took me three weeks to dissect what understanding I have of what he's speaking. Amen? So, Matthew 6 and 24, Lord, I thank you for your word. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you're here. We thank you that you're ever present wherever we go. And we're sealed with you into the day of Christ Jesus. Lord, we thank you that you, Father God, know every place on the hairs that's fallen out of heads that's in heads. All the way to the point of the biggest hurt, Father God, to the wholeness of this thirst. And Lord, I ask that you would activate us in the fullness of the word today in Christ Jesus. Amen. So Matthew 6 and 24, one of the, one of the very most special foundational uh, chapters that you may not come into fullness of when you read it 20 times, much less 40, but I believe we're always absorbing things here out of the scriptures. But I want to give you insight because how many knows the church wasn't supposed to be broke? How many knows that the church don't have to beg? For it says, in the glory is the fullness of Christ Jesus. And so what is needed is in the glory. Amen? So no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Amen? Amen. When it's talking about wealth there, it's actually talking about mammon. There's nothing wrong with wealth. Is the service of it. Amen? And so, mammon is, um, mammons, 
the best I can do. Um, in the Greek there, wealth, etc. is personified as an object of worship. So what he's saying here is, he's saying, don't chase after this. Amen. Hebraically, when you begin to understand that the Jewish um, uh, family, the, 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 the nation of, uh, of Jews had always been wealthy. Now, we know because of choice, they was put in captivity and enslavement and different things. But I do want you to understand they had Deuteronomy 8 still. They had Deuteronomy 28. They have Malachi, which we'll talk about that Malachi uh, here in a minute towards the end. Open up the window of heaven, right? All these scriptures they had. But what I want you to understand, Jesus is saying, don't chase after an object. I am the Messiah. He's saying, you either be devoted to it or you'll be devoted to me. Now, I want to paraphrase before I say something, because sometimes people don't hear me properly, okay? I'm not telling anybody to quit their job. So don't hear me say that today. I did not say it. I will not say it. But I want to change your perspective of your job. Okay? All right. So, we are not t uh, talking about possession, but oppression. So if I go after possessing something that God has told me to possess, He's entrusted it, but I don't worship it. I worship the source. But the moment I come more focused on the possession, it comes my obsession. And with obsession become oppression, which now has put chains back on. They had no clue what I was preaching today. Uh, but now you begin to obtain chains in your mind that now, I just wish it was 5 o'clock. Come on, I, I know it's in the room. I, I just wish it was Friday already. I wonder if we don't have to work a half a day on Saturday. Or, uh, I wonder if we're going to call me in. Come on, am, I, am I in the right room? Because this is the key. You are wasting your life when you come because now you're oppressed, but you're probably unaware of the demonic activity that's trying to draw you away. I'm going to expose this by the word today. I think the biggest battles and the one reason we lose the most as the body of Christ is a lack of revelation. Your next breakthrough is a revelation away. But to be established in that revelation, it comes spiritualized of understanding. Because now that I can understand the spirit realm, I won't run into something that I can't see, but I can only see by the light of God, the word, lighting it up that I don't run into it. Right? So if there's a door there and it's there for a reason, right? We like the cool air, the, and the, so we like the warm air during the winter, all that good stuff, right? It's there, it's got a use. Well, I want you to understand the spirit realm is like the same. You must be able to see in the spirit if you're not careful, you'll run into the door. Does that make sense? So if I have understanding, because this is what happens, when I gain a revelation, I come into it. Christ Jesus, right? He reveals it to me I, 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 as a new place in Him I'm now aware of, right? From there, that I'm spiritual eyes are open up, I'm aware of where I'm at in Him. Come on, catch that in the spirit. All right? From there, oppression, what is oppression? The state of being subject to unjust treatment or control, mental pressure or distress. Being ignorant of oppression opens up into the demonic influence. So, now look, after Jesus encountered me in that jail cell, I ain't, I am, by improper language, but my wife ain't here to correct me. I ain't saying that I didn't wish it was five o'clock before. But every time I have the thought of it, I step back into the one that's inside of me and say, God, I don't want to go any further. God, I'm tired. God, I'm fatigued. God, you told me to do this, but I don't feel like I can go any further. In the midst of being honest, I can ask you because now that I've identified what I was about to run into, y'all didn't hear me, now I can say he begins to illuminate his presence. Amen. Have you ever read the word? You didn't feel like the presence of God was there, but you walked out of the house and about 30 minutes later, you're like, man, there's something that was weighty that broke. There's a mentalness that I was entertaining, but now 
That's a testimony. You see, every time you ain't got to testify of him breaking you out of jail, sometimes you need to take and testify. At 2 p.m., I was ready to quit. At 2 p.m., I didn't want to go any further. But I'm here to testify that Nail Scar's hand reached down in the midst of my honesty and jerked me up out of the mental oppression I was in. Look at your neighbor and say, you want to cast out demons, right? Well, you got to be able to see in the spirit realm. You know why? Because that thing is mad at you. Let me tell you the number one reason he's mad at you. Because he'll never be able to live in the glory that you carry. The image you are. Me. Number two, you just stole somebody else that he'll never be able to walk in that glory of. That's the importance of saying, God, this is how I am. But I carry everything that's needed. I think we fight some attacks that we come in agreement to. And I'm not saying it went an attack, but it was already, you gotta remember the things already defeated. I'm not playing down how you feel. It's very real when it happened. But I'm gonna tell you what, it's very real when his glory is something that breaks a, a lot from hell. The devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. When you can identify it, if it is killing you, just, uh, destroying you, or what? Lying to you? It's the devil. But if it's life, it's Jesus. But I want you to understand something. It's not just life. It's an abundance. Look at your neighbor and say, we want the abundance. The enemy uses money as a tool of seduction. Amen? Now, this is something that I've learned that God gave me a revelation two years ago that I have watched. I have watched certain people um, that began well but got off track. How many has read um, maybe Luke chapter 4? Amen? How about Matthew 4? Let's look at Matthew 4 and 8. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I give to you in this, if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, go say, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. What is this happening here? We know this is the Son of God that did not falter fall in any way other than die for us and give us life, right? So with that, what does this give us very real evidence? The moment you're restored and redeemed, I promise you at some point, as, especially if you're open up to the revelation that God is going to fund what He put on your life. As He does that, this is what happens. The enemy, during the fast, during your day-to-day, -day, maybe you feast and You know you ain't always supposed to be fasting. Sometimes you feast him. I didn't say eating too much. I said sometimes you're supposed to feast. Like love feast. That's in the Bible. The New Testament, right? They had love feast. You actually can look at breaking of bread, and that's actually part of the unity, the revelation that fell on the day of Pentecost, that the 12 or 11 at that moment, just that added the 12 back, was fussing, fighting, now they come on. And glory shows up, right? What I want you to hear through this is that the enemy, Satan, whether it's him or himself, or he sends one of his little minions, or he sends Mammon, that will come. It's not that you ain't supposed to obtain it. You just ain't supposed to worship it. Can I tell you how you know if you weren't possibly you worship it? When he stopped. No, not us. God. Not your favorite preacher on TV. Not the man down the road or the woman down the road preaching the gospel. But when God speaks to you and says, release this. If you can't let it go, I'm not saying it in a real battle. I've been there before. But when you release that thing, you say, God, I serve you more than that little bit that I just had in my pocket or my hand. That's what the lady, the widow lady did. She took everything she had. She says, God, I worship you. I serve you more. Here's the little mite I have, and I am going to release it to you. Because if how can I now follow and serve an unseen God, but I clench something I can see more than I do what I can't see? That's how it comes. Okay, I'm not after your money. I don't care about 
testimony. He promises he will pay the way. I'm trying to get you to a place that you are no longer in lack. That even if it runs out, you know it wasn't running out because he's about to pour back in. Usually in the moment of obedience, he opens the spout up a little bit more. Oh, yeah. What is it? Are we going to get to the reservoir in a second? I'm trying to lay a foundation because I uh, understand this. God ain't going to give you something that's going to take his place. Amen? So, real quick, you might take your notes. We are called to master money. Not yet master us. We're called to master it, right? It says, Ecclesiastes 10, 19, bread is made for laughter. And wine gladness, uh, gladdens life, and money answers everything. So we know the bread is Jesus. Amen. And it talks about the new wine of the Spirit, gladden, right? That's what happened to my sister a while ago when joy, tell me God wanted to demonstrate his word. All of a sudden there was a laughter that began to come out of her. What is that? That is not, you ain't had no wine today of the natural, but she had some wine of the Holy Ghost. Now let me tell you something about wine. I used to do drugs. I used to drink. I used to act like a heathen that I was. When I would drink or I would take medicine or pills, what would happen is this. It would suppress the issue inside of me for a current moment. But I met a king. And he filled me with a Holy Ghost. And he sent the real wine of the Spirit. Can I tell you today, there ain't no pain after it. When the wine of the Spirit hits something, there's a testimony after it. Because he'll demonstrate his word. Amen? Anything I've been codependent on, I just needed the new wine of the Spirit to hit an area of brokenness that I didn't have the time to realize was there because I was just trying to survive to the next day. But God says, I want you to what? Thrive for eternity. And that's what the wine of the Spirit does. After all that, the bread, Jesus, right? We know that He is the bread of life. Now we see the Holy Ghost that brings gladness of life. And then, listen kids. Listen. Hey man, I, I know they wouldn't teach you to do that. It's probably improper to do that in big church, right? But I never want to excel that I can't be like a child who just says it's Jesus that makes me strong. That he gives me the blessing. Some of y'all, if you want to reach the next generation, you're going to have to shake off what you thought was supposed to be put together. And that of your dignity and say, Holy Ghost, I, I need some fresh wine of the Spirit. I, I ate the bread. And now I thank you for the wine. Because I'm getting drunk in the Holy Ghost. And with that, That's what happened when he encountered you in the jail cell. Ain't no proper teaching. <laughs> Amen. But the Holy Ghost said it's okay. But he ends with money answers everything. Money answers everything. Do you realize that sometimes even a prophetic word isn't going to get their attention? The wine splashed them. With the natural bread or the can of beans, she gave them that more. Why? Because they was just crying out that you know nothing about. You didn't get that part of the conversation because you had to step in faith. See, this breaks our religiosity because practicality is the way to the supernatural. That they needed some pinto beans. They needed some buyer sausages. I know most people don't like them, but I did. I, I go without them. I wouldn't have made it. I, I don't even care for sardines, but I like the spicy ones because it's hot enough. I didn't taste the sardine. <laughs> Life. Sometimes it's going to take, it may not be that you have but four loaves, a few fish, but supernatural can come in after they been. You see what I'm saying today? God can sit down in a moment.
Money answers everything. In other words, he has given the earth room to the sons of God. That's men and women. There's no gender in the spirit, okay? And with that, he's saying this. He says, it's going to take some things. This is wisdom from Ecclesiastes from Solomon, right? It's going to take some natural money to make some things happen down here. Amen? We'd be plum goofy if not, I believe, until we get our new bodies. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Please remind me of that. That's the first one. We're called to master it, not yet master us. Amen? Do you choose your job, business, profession because of the money it brings or the fulfillment it provides? Do you choose... Your job, your business, your profession for the money you're going to obtain or what it actually provides. Y'all need me to break that down just a little bit? Colossians 3 and 23. Whatever you do, do work heartily as for the Lord rather than for men. See, I'm not going to work because I'm going to obtain a check. I'm going to work because God's opened up something to me. And I'm going, I'm working for Him. He is the CEO. He is the CFO. He is the COO. He, had, he gave us the LLC. He gave us the corporation. Colossians 3, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance. It is the Lord Christ whom you serve. Y'all ready for this? Your job isn't about a paycheck. It is either a place of discipleship. Jesus met them in the field, on the boat. The tax collector. He sat down. It probably was an area that, I don't know, maybe it had a bar in it. I don't know. But he sat down with the heathens. He didn't stay there with the heathens. Matthew, Mark, okay, hang on, Dustin. But he taught Dustin how to get a bite off that table there and come to eat from the bread of heaven. And what he gave me the ability now to do is, is now, it's not that they catch no more fish. They seen fish where there was no water multiplied. They seen bread multiplied where there wasn't a bakery up the road. <laughs> See the flip in the script. So what am I saying here? Prophetically speaking is, you don't go to work for a paycheck. But what is paving Look, I promise you this. What is on your life, a paycheck will never provide for what you got to do for the kingdom. I want to go to the nations. Well, can you go take and work the teller station at Publix for, uh, I need you to be there. Give me six months, says the Lord. Ooh, that ain't what you said, Lord. <laughs> Let that sink in for a minute. What did Joseph have to get to before he finally got up there and he was saying, look, let's take a percentage and put it over here because there's a famine coming. Sometimes God will send you into certain things to teach you obedience because he's going to give you the ability to be the abundance in the midst of the famine of somebody else's life. So now I'm not going just for the paycheck. It may have got me at one point, but I don't serve money. I serve the Lord of the Lord, so my heart is postured to him. Now everything I touch has to multiply. Why? Because he lives in me. If he broke the bread and it multiplied then, Josh, it'll multiply now. If that fish was there and they multiplied, they'll multiply now. All you need to do is go in the covert when it's lacking and say, I thank you. Then now you begin to send the food in. Now I thank you for the multiplication of that of fish, that of meat. I thank you for the commodity, not just to me. Lord, I can't touch my neighbors. I know they like it. I can't touch their covert. But I'm going to touch mine prophetically. I say mine ain't just full, but your theirs is full. I begin to move to their home. Amen. 
It says the book couldn't hold the miracles that Jesus did. I'm not saying in this room. But the problem in America is everybody wants to be in the spotlight breaking the bread and seeing it multiply. But before you can be in the spotlight and stand and not compromise, can you stand privately and nobody but heaven knows that you lay hands on the cover and you see the multiplication of it? I hate to see a ministry on the rise and then all of a sudden they're talking about every miracle their self that God did through them, but they, they ain't nobody else there. I'm not saying that it's completely wrong. But I ain't saying it's right neither. Why don't you activate that individual that just got healed? And if it's the wisdom of God to tell man, teach them to testify. This is what the King of Kings does. Because now I'm not teaching people to be in a spotlight. I'm teaching people to run to the light. Look at your neighbor and say, be the light. Say, so don't hide it under that basket. So, do you, I'm going to ask you again, do you choose your job, business, profession because of the money it brings or the fulfillment it provides? Think about this. I can remember when I would get a check and it didn't pay for everything it didn't pay for. I mean, I, it's still times like that now. And God's entrusted me with more than I've ever could imagine. Like, Lord, it, it seems to all run out. Anytime there's a deficit or a decrease, it's a time for the miracle to show up to him. Because you know what? If you are on your business, if you are the head of your household, if you are do have a responsibility because everybody does in some fashion of family, what happens is somebody gonna catch a glimpse. You don't know the little ones watching you. You don't know grandma's watching you. You don't know the uh, the employees watching you. You don't know the one down the street that you know them well. The circumstances around you, they know. But all of a sudden, see, because somebody said how special Jesus was, didn't win me. Amen? It didn't establish me. It was when I was like, oh, goodness gracious, they still say he's the king of kings. And they just had to walk through that. <laughs> Woo! That's unreal about that now. Right? I'm trying to give you the real. Because look, everybody in this room has suffered at some point or suffering. But can I tell you that he still provides? Amen. Do you serve or worship that which is in the natural or that which is unseen? So, I'm about, I'm about halfway done. we got about three and a half wires. Our perspective and thoughts about money is the results of our actions with it. Our perspective and thoughts about money is the results of our actions with it. In other words, stewardship. We was really, money answers all things. We're not to worship money. We're to distribute. We're to now release what he says release, right? Some of y'all heard this, but I feel like I need to build somebody's faith. That little redhead for Noah's Elijah. Second from the smallest of mine. We didn't know how he was going to pay for his, uh, for him to be born and all this. And we had all this saving, doing everything we could do. I go to a conference that I'm a part of, but God tells me in the midst of it to sow the biggest seed I'd ever sowed. Next thing you know, I come back on Monday, I'm having a business meeting. They owner finance the business, which is the biggest business I own in this current moment by the grace of God. Y'all didn't hear me, owner financed it, zero. Um, and then they, um, uh, 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 my wife is at the, a meeting while I'm at the meeting with a baby normal checkup, and all of a sudden they got, you got insurance. And she's gonna pay. Now, what I sold was at five thousand dollars. I'm just gonna. I'm just not about no man. But that's all I have to see my thirdborn be be brought into this world. But he says I'll supply all needs. See, if I served and worshipped money, I would have held on to that five 
and I could have got all religious and said, five is prophetic and all this, but when I released it, truly grace hit my life. Truly, it said this, I will establish something in a drop place that now God can pour through to make it a lush place. Y'all ain't hear me. We're almost there. We've about got a foundation laid. Look at your neighbor and say, what's your thinking to where you're headed? So Romans 12 and 2, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Transform means not the same. You didn't change. It's a new day. It is a total breaking cutaway uh, of old wiring and it's a new wiring that's there, right? How many knows in natural wiring you can still have wiring that functions, but it, not, it doesn't have it can handle the same current um, that travels through there as the new perfected wiring if it was rewired? You know, after so long it's outdated, they gotta change it, right? So the, it's not saying you didn't make it to now, but it's saying I now God and go surrender this for the new wiring that can handle the new current, which brings the new currency. So, look at your neighbor and say, I'm quitting nothing. I'm beginning something new. How many knows that, how many's ever run a marathon or drove by a marathon, read about a marathon, know something about a marathon? So there's checkpoints, right? They give you like drinks and nutrition, whatever you need. They check on you, aid, whatever else, right? How many knows that just because you actually used that aid, it didn't mean you started over, you began a new part of the race. So in that race, as I obtain what is there, because I could be all tenacious, and what, maybe that ain't the word, I could be all zealous. Say, so you know what, I don't need to stop at this one. My spiritual father, I sat with him about three or four months ago, I was back in the summer, maybe uh, first of summer, and he told me, he said, this is literally scientific. It says people that read the Word more than four days a week, like in study, reading the Word, they're healthier than people that visit the Word. This is a studied out scientific, went through the results have to check in. That's the importance of bread. It ain't religious to read your Word. It's intentional to read your Word. <laughs> But Dustin, you just don't know my schedule. Like, you don't know my schedule either. <laughs> but I gotta get that word. <laughs> Amen? Amen? This ain't gonna beat you up. This is a place that, this is it. When I say stuff about reading your word or prayer or prophecy, that's an invitation. That ain't a discouragement. That's a place to say, look, this worked for me. And I, without it, I can't live. Without it, I've got depression because I didn't read it. Without it, I picked up sickness because of my lack of obedience. Without it, I missed the invitation. Yes. So hurry up, Dustin. So that you may prove. That's what I love. Now prove is to bring into evidence. What we was just talking about was because people read the word at least four days or more is evidence is proven, right? So now there's a gift of discernment that now I can see motives, I can see intentions, I can see demons, I can see brothers and sisters, right? That's a gift of the Holy Ghost. I like to say this as a mystery or a revelation of Romans 12 too. Proof means I have discernment of what is light and what is darkness. There's a difference. Because I can look, you know the witch can spot a witch. You know, I, I've heard, I've been in conferences and I've heard 15 rows back, that's a witch. But she was a witch too. <laughs> Y'all didn't hear me. I mean, you ain't been broke out enough in some conferences or some church because some of that, there's more demons in there than there is the glory. But this is the key. This is the key. Hear me today. If, I, if I'm in my word and I'm eating in my word, when some, 
than walks up on the scene, more than just I got your intentions and motives because I got a gift of the Holy Ghost, but because like, I, 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 I received the invitation with the word to read it. I conversed with the word. I spent time of the word. I then found another tool. I meditate upon the word. That actually means roar if you break it down. So it ain't twisted up quite in the corner. It's actually repetitive coming out of you, murmuring even some of the translation of meditation, right? So look at your neighbor and say, you are activated in speaking the word out loud in Jesus' name. So I can prove what is the will of God. What is the will of God? It's what we pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Right? How many knows it'd be great to feed 50,000 orphans right now? Amen? What if you were supposed to fund it but not go feed them? See, how my body functions was made perfect in the beginning. It said, he said it is good. Right? What part of the body of Christ am I called to be, which is the will of God on my life, that I'm to help function for the, what, 50,000 to be fed? Yes. Catch that, please. You don't have to have your hands on everything. You don't even have to be seen as long as Jesus is seen, as long as the mission is fulfilled. Because this is thing about a mandate of a vision that God's put in an earth realm. Put your hands like you got some weight on your shoulders. See, when God gives a vision, He's actually going to give you a glimpse. You may not have had the leading vision, but you had a part of the vision. Take one piece of the puzzle away. It looks funny, right? Y'all put your arms down there. But you understand, you're helping carry the vision. You're a part of the fulfillment of what God is wanting to do in the earth realm. Amen? We're still on Him releasing. The reservoir. So, acceptable. I can prove this is acceptable to God. Let me tell you, let me tell you, y'all encourage the far, I'm going to be country today, far out of me today. Y'all don't know how many times, probably you know, how many times has the Lord prophetically told me to get people up and start marching around in a circle? I had to say a word. People just began to get up. And people began to grab flags. And people began to do this. And look, and I'm telling you, we serve an unorthodox God. In other words, what is it? He tells us to do unorthodox things. March around Jericho and it'll fall. Uh, you know, people begin to do things and went out of obedience and it sets them up for what was holding them out to be a bridgeway. Amen? But Tickle the far, encourage the far out of me. Because you don't know how awkward I felt. After times of telling people, now there's been people cast demons out of them. They've been sickness leave people's body in that marching. There's been people filled in the Holy Ghost for that marching. But it is very real. It's the thing, though. For a leader that activates you to see the activation taking place and they didn't have to say a word later. You just don't understand what that'll do. And why am I saying this? Number one, y'all encourage me to fall out of it. Number two, when you, you are the leader comes alive in you, it'll encourage you for what you give away comes active in somebody's life. I come to prophesy everything that God is going to call the fun on your life uh, is about to be activated in the name of Jesus. Acceptable and perfect. I can prove it's perfect. Can I help you? What I'm thinking is where I'm headed. So, so now I'm called to a different responsibility. It ain't just my cupboard he's filling. I'm praying for somebody else's cupboard. Now they activate and they begin to walk in the Holy Ghost. But all of a sudden, they start commanding angels instead of taking praying, God, send your angels. Bring awareness of what's supposed to go on in the supernatural. Y'all know new ages, people worshiping angels and going through angels instead of Jesus. Okay, so we have to be careful. So is this perfect? I don't want, just because they were gifted, I'm, I'm studying Corinthians. Y'all hear more about Corinthians in the future months. I'm not in the depth study of it, but a side note, 
Um, but with that, Paul didn't tell them to quit moving in the gifts. Number one, he dealt with spiritual pride. That's what Corinthians is about. And he dealt with mammon and different things, right? But he didn't shut them down in moving in the supernatural. He brought parameters where they did not go over the wall. They kept going through the door. Is it perfect how they're walking in the spirit? Because what they're thinking is where they're headed. I can remember a spiritual son coming to me. And he repented. He's like, look, you can't believe I opened my eyes up and I was reading this. It was a book that didn't make it to the canon. And, and, and there was a struggle. What happened is now we got to pull you out of the seeds that was planted. And now get you back in step with the Holy Ghost. It ain't even saying that book wasn't real. It was saying it ain't alive and active. Now what is alive and active will make you in a straight, keep you on a straight and narrow and it'll be perfect. Perfect means maturity. So I grow continually in the perfection of the originality. Is this helping anybody? And everybody's like, the release of the reservoir, what? It's coming. This is the last thing I want to talk about here. Some may be discouraged because of their lack of wealth. God may intentionally block wealth to protect us. That was talking about earlier. If you're going to serve it, if you're going to squander it, and then I know it, the Father, the Father, I'm just not to, just, to, to say you're no good or nothing else. Look, He was waiting on that hill for that prodigal to return. Okay? Inheritance He had gave to Him. So don't hear what I'm not saying. But I understand that discouragement can come when God's promised you something. The power of God's hit you. You begin to walk. You're proven. You're, you're seeing His will. You're doing all. But it hasn't come into full manifestation. Anybody else ever been there? Well, be encouraged. It's the journey. <laughs> When discouragement comes, can you still be courageous? Because courageousness says I deal with the DIS discouragement, and my faith is activated. God, if you say it, it has to be so. Or is it that now I can see in the spirit that I'm missing, I'm lacking? And it may be that you ain't doing nothing wrong. It may be you the light. <laughs> That he had to send to do a dark place where other eyes could be opened up. Y'all didn't hear me. And I'm glad that he made it down in the valley of dry bones. Fresh. You know, that's a prophetic picture for what Jesus was going to do. I can't imagine. This will help you. It's a break this curse. I can't imagine if that Jesus, the Messiah, didn't throw himself in that jail cell with me. I'd still be a straight, probably dead or in, in, in an institution. But I'm still here, flat-footed. Encouraged the far out of me today. Amen. You gotta, you gotta remind yourself, I'm still flat-footed. I'm still sure-footed. The storm come to take me out, but I'm still standing. Now I've got the revelation, you can't take me out, devil. I speak to my emotions and I say, now, sober up. I speak to my mindset and I say, be rewired. Because God gave a promise, I'm going to the other side. He said, you go and you go. He just sent you in the midst of the storm to be the solution. <laughs> uh huh? Make you work. I want to hold it back. I go over and fall up on somebody. Look, you feel like running, run. Amen. You feel like dancing, dance. You feel like laying out. God, just be obedient. As long as it's Christ Jesus, just walk this thing out. What I see is her running after Jesus. Come on, what I see is her running after Jesus.
to Jesus. See, he's very honest. He'll have you doing orthodox things. But is it obey? Is it, do I keep my dignity? Yeah, she'll pick up the face. Ricky Tatiya. 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 Ricky Tati
Then when contentment comes into place, he opens up the reservoir. Look at your neighbor and say, what is the reservoir? Glad you asked. So, Deuteronomy 8 and 18. I'm going to give a real quick teaching on this because I know we got some new people and I'm so grateful. But also we're going to connect it with the next chapter. Y'all ready? And just because you ain't been here don't mean you ain't been in this chapter. I'm just here to present the new chapter of what he's speaking. I actually begin to prophetically speak, open up the scroll. You know it's talking about revelation, open it up the scroll, right? I believe there's a prophetic word in every season, whether good or bad to the naked eye. If it's good season or bad, every season's good. So, Deuteronomy 8 and 18. But you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He who has given you power to make wealth, that He may confirm His covenant which He swore to your fathers as it is the day. And it shall come about if you ever forget the Lord your God and go after other gods, Memon, and serve them and worship them, I will testify against you today that you will surely perish. Amen? So you've been serving God. That's what I believe in the room. You've been walking and serving God. Doing all you can do. And contentment has settled your spirit. I told God two weeks ago, I said, I'll sell everything and do anything and everything you tell me to do as long as I got you. I do that quarterly, if not sooner. Every, every, all the time. And it's not saying he didn't tell me to have this or that. It's not about that. But I only serve him because I had much before, but I had nothing internally. Now that I've obtained peace, the rock of salvation, I'm here to tell you, standing flat footed, there's nothing in the natural that can take his place. His place. Look at your neighbor and say, Power. Power. Now I'm going to spell this and y'all can pronounce it. This is the Hebrew word for it. K-O-A K-O-A K-H Come on. Come on. And I'm just repeating what y'all are saying to me. That's the Hebrew word of power. It means vigor, strength, capacity, power, substance. Generally means capacity or ability. So he's saying this up here. He said, it, for it is he who give, is giving you capacity or ability to make wealth. So help you understand a little better. That's what it means by power. Now reservoir, look at your neighbor and say, finally he got there. Finally he got there. It means to store, stock, source, supply, reserve, fund, pool, accumulation. So what I want you to understand is this. Atlanta currently gets 70% of water from Lake Lanier. That's a reservoir, right? That is a man-made lake that now is a reservoir to hold the water what? To get 70% of the water to Atlanta. I think the other comes from Lake Alatoona or something like that. Another reservoir. But it don't just supply water, drinking, right? That is something that's needed. Prophetically speaking, he is the living water. I wish your appetite. With that, it is the power or the ability to obtain something, accumulate, because there shall be a divine release. Now let's think about this. You've got reservoirs that are man-made lakes. Then you have a different, smaller reservoir that is a water tower now, right? We got good. So now a reservoir, it don't just supply water, it what? It recreational, fish. Now see all these things that a reservoir can accompany. Then man, God gives a man a witty invention. Let's do a water tower over here because now we can hit a region with this water. Can I come and prophesy to somebody that you've been in a season of accumulating what you needed? That for a reason. You used to be called for a couple. And I thank God for that season. But it's stretching us to a new capacity that we went from later lakes. We're going to water towers because we're here to affect regions. We're here to affect nations. We're here to affect people beyond the one at Dollar General. Because think about this. It's, it's one, I'm, I'm going to take you a little further. Y'all ready? It's one thing to give a living water in aisle three. 
It's another thing to hook them up where they got constant water. It's flowing in their house. It's going in and out. Cut the faucet on. And it's on. Can you be a spout? And it's continually flowing living water. Can you have the, You have been in a season for the last year to accumulate. So that's what a reservoir is. Amen? I'm going to read the professional because I get young with me. I get a little... I'm not very well trained by man. Reservoir provided the principal way to ensure that the region has water year-round. Revival set. They'll be planned every year, right? See the tent go up. There's nothing wrong with tent. I love tent. We got one. But what about a tent that's mobile, a house that's mobile year-round? That got hooked up to the stream or to the river that come a reservoir that now has can be the God said I can entrust them let me let it flow out the other side because now they're about to affect their neighbors they're about to affect the region there are more than 20 small water supply reservoirs located in various parts of the region two large reservoirs Lake Lanier and Alatoona Lake are major sources of supply for the region. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers surveyed Metro Atlanta in the 1950s and built those large reservoirs on the two best sites. In addition to supplying drinking water, Lake Lanier and Lake Alatoona provide flood control, <laughs> um, hydroelectric power. So now some people, the reason they have power is because of the lake. Um, recreation, fish, wildlife management. Now, I want to throw something in here because we're going to talk about the release of the reservoir. Do y'all know why? Have y'all ever went by some of it, especially up in the mountains, some of the lakes that they build up there, and you'll see them like, almost like they're, it's a drought. Like, it looks like more like a mud puddle than a lake. The reason they start releasing them is because they're preparing for that of fall and winter because the, the, the snow and, and rain will be much heavier than preparing where it no flood places. Amen. So I don't want to just release of the, uh, the reservoir. I want what? Wisdom in the release of the reservoir. I'm going to revisit this. Supernatural wealth will not come through a job. It is where you're discipled or a mission field. Supernatural wealth, come, wealth comes through the voice of God. You want to know where? Your scriptures, Deuteronomy 28. Or your chat, that chapter. This is the importance. There will be seasons that you put in certain jobs, maybe. Or um, certain seasons that you know, I can remember when I was in drug court. I had to, I had to go and do like, uh, um, what was that community service? I didn't get paid nothing to go do that. It was a part of my consequences, which was the mercy of God. Because without me facing those consequences, I might still be in the streets. So the next time you have to face a consequence because what I sow I will reap, know is the mercy of God that you're facing certain consequences which is giving you the right mind, giving you the ability to prove where you don't end back up in a cycle. I love Jesus. So when you end up in these seasons, which I believe you've been in, Look at your neighbor and say, prosperity, wealth, has little to do with money. Prosperity is peace, joy, friends, family, riches. Prosperity is to have more than enough, an uh, overflow. So what it was is, sometimes God will put you in a place... And it feels like, man, look, y'all lived on four hundred dollars and didn't get to cash my check first. I can't tell you how long building a business without license, all this, and I still had more than enough. I I cannot articulate how it happened, but God always showed up. Does that make sense? I lived in my warehouse. house. Oh, my lights are paid. 
My point being is this. He will put you through certain se um, seasons to accumulate. You thought you was there for money, paycheck on Friday or Tuesday, whenever you get it. But you was really there to accumulate <laughs> a real friend. You was there to accumulate somebody that can lift you to a place higher than a paycheck. Because even in the desired amount you wanted on your salary went to pay for what God had on your life. He was seeing if he could entrust the season of obedience to set you up, not to just be a, a, a reservoir, but can entrust the release of the reservoir through you. you hear me today? Is this encouraging anybody today? Say finally. <laughs> Malachi 3 and 10. From the days of your father, you have turned aside from my statues and have not kept them. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you say, how shall we return? Question mark. So he hears you when you ask him. <laughs> Whew. My heart is seasoned, Pastor Angie, is when he said, let it go. And I said, you can have it, and I'm still gripping it. I ain't even talking about the sin y'all think I'm talking about. I'm talking about I wanted to be the one that was over our head and feed the orphans. But he was saying, I need you to take and deal with the ones in your region. I need to take and cause the, 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 the land under your feet to now yield its fruit where you can fund what I've called others to do. Look at your neighbor and say, He answers when you ask. So now say, He may do it different than the way you wanted Him to. But how shall we return? Will man rob God? Question mark. Yet you are robbing me. But you say, How have we robbed you? Say so God responds in your tithes and contributions. You are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me. I know I feel uncomfortable when this one's done. Woo! Dustin needs to be talking about this. Look, you got if you're gonna read Deuteronomy 8 and 18, you better read 19 with it. If you're gonna read Malachi 3 and 10, um, you better make sure that you are in a place that you can really read 7 through 10 and then 10 through 12. Don't cut out the parts you want. That's what's wrong with America. They got a cut, a cut, uh, a, a devil you are liar, a, a, a cookie cutter program that they cut out the part they want and throw away. And God says, I am done with that mess. Prophetically speaking. So here comes the encouragement after this last verse. Uh, you are cursed with a curse for you are robbing me, the whole nation of you. Ten. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse that there may be good, there may be food in my house and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open up the windows of heaven for you and pour out for you a blessing until there is no more need. I will rebuke the devourer for you. <laughs> I literally prophetically seen as I was preparing and praying about this, I seen worms that were eating things in the spirit realm. There was things that's been attacking you. There's things that's been eaten up in your life or throughout your bloodline. But I come to help you understand the word said that he would rebuke the devourer. The one he sent the canker worm, the devil, but God says I will rebuke what I allow and now I will multiply. <laughs> Prophet Marcus, when you get a, you ready? We're done almost on this plane. 
bring the full tithe into the storehouse that you may there may be food in my house and thereby put me to test says the Lord of hosts if I will not open up the windows of heaven for you and pour down for a blessing until there is no more need I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it will not destroy the fruits of your soil and your vine in the field shall not fail to bear says the Lord of hosts then all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a land of delight, says the Lord of hosts. I want to come to speak to you prophetically. I know this ties back to a priest when you actually study the word. He is speaking directly to the priest that is in. And if you study this, correct? And so with that, I want y'all to understand we are a holy nation. We are king and priest. And I believe we've got to get back to a place. Some of you have been destroyed. And some of you have been focused on not even wanting to go to work. But look, I hope it flips the script and it brings a plot twist to that, which is this next week. That your day-to-day -day will be intentional. Your day-to-day -day will be the mission field in which you're called to. Your day-to-day -day will be an invitation because now I've been privately and I've accumulated a reservoir. I go on the scene for the release. I, I go on the scene now to what God has given me. And then when we do that, it gives us the ability to not get tied up with what He blesses us with. Come on. He can have it all. It's already His. It's already His. If it already belongs to Him, and I'm just a steward because I got the bread. <laughs> the spirit because I keep eating the bread and I keep drinking wine of the Holy Ghost I can steward what he's about to bring to me because I've accumulated what was needed in a hard season in a dry season in a dark season now I can be that what he releases because you thought it looked rough now It's about to get worse out there. Stand on your feet. Say, but God has chosen me. For I've been eating the bread. Come on. I've been drinking of the wine of the Spirit. And I'm ready. For he said he'd fund it. I have no lack. I have abundance. I thank you, God, that I pursue you, spirit, soul, and body, every ounce of my being, for I'm more than a son. I'm an ambassador of Christ. Say, I'm a bond servant unto you, Jesus. What can man do to me? Because you already done it all for me. Has anybody not been filled with the Holy Ghost? If you hadn't, what I mean, you, evidence of speaking in tongues comes, but it's much more than just the language, okay? It's everything. <laughs> You'll get along with people that don't even like you somehow. <laughs> I Man, I know they don't like me, but how can I stand here and be real? I'm being real. The Holy Ghost is much more than just power. Amen. He's Jesus that walked on the earth realm with seats on the right hand of the Father that now has come and filled you. So now he brings Jesus on the scene in every individual that laid their life down. Y'all ready? If you haven't been filled with the Holy Ghost, don't be surprised when all of a sudden He bubbles up out of you. My little five-year-old, seven-year-old now, he said this. He says, Daddy, I want to get up on that mic and I want to pray in tongues. I said, you can't mimic me, son. You got to get it from the source. I said, what you do is you begin to ask Him, God, I want to be filled. God, I want to overflow. Because Daddy's in the other room praying, just let the wine hit him. Fill him, Lord. Not my 
will over their life, but your will. That's my prophetic decree over you today. Allow the bread of life to begin to rise inside of you and to begin to nurture you. And the wine of the Spirit come in to make your soul whole, to make your spirit solid and established that you would rise up on eagle wings. For he's living in reservoir in last season. He's releasing reservoirs in this season. You won't just affect your household. You'll affect the nation. You'll affect the cubicle beside you. You'll affect the one up the road that you don't even like. Do I have any reservoirs in the room? Reservoirs of the Holy Ghost. That's the sound, by the way. You want to break it at the Come on. I want you to come into this altar. I'm not at all before. Look, I, I'm just a messenger today. I want you to begin to worship Jesus because he's a